Are you migrating your Office 365 domain to Google Workspace? I have 10 tips that I'd like to share with you based on my experience with this exact same process. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome back to the Google Admin Bootcamp. I'm going to be sharing 10 tips with you in this video. Now, it's important to note that I was using the Google Domain Migration Tool that is part of Google Workspace for Education plus um, that's where you can find it inside of the google admin console go to account and you'll see data migration and i'm going to talk through the setup and the process that i went through and give you some tips that i wish i knew when i was setting this up now i performed this migration for a private school uh, they were migrating from office 365 to google workspace for education they had been using google workspace with their students but their staff were still using um, microsoft outlook uh, for email it was about 150 users all staff the students were already in the google tenant and i was asked to migrate approximately 10 years of email calendar and contact data from um, outlook into google workspace that was roughly 500 gigabytes of data migrated not a massive migration migration, but reasonable size. Now, there are lots of different migration tools available, both from Microsoft and from Google and from third parties. I did some extensive research about that. And based on the size of the migration, the amount of data, the amount of users, we chose to use the built-in data migration tool. For larger migrations, it may not be the best choice, but for something this size, it worked uh, pretty well. So here we go, 10 tips. Tip number one is just going to save you a lot of time and aggravation. Before you begin your migration, encourage your users to do an inbox cleanup. The less data you have, the less data you have to migrate. So ask them to remove and clean up their folders, delete any unwanted messages, um, download any attachments that are larger than 25 megabytes in size. Uh, the migration tool has a limit. It can't migrate anything that's larger than that. Empty the spam, the trash, just clean things up. It'll be better for every user when they get into Google um, and it's less work to migrate. Tip number two is to run some test migrations. This turned out to be a really helpful practice for us. Uh, we were able to identify some old staff accounts, staff members who had left the school, but their accounts um, were still available. We reactivated them and then migrated their data individually just to go through the process and work out some, some kinks and bugs. This was really helpful because there were some staff members who had a lot of data. So that really allowed us to test some different things. Um, you know, individuals who used lots of folders, who had lots of calendar events, um, different, different strategies would just alert you to things you might need to be aware of. Now, along with that, running these test migrations helped us identify some folders that we could skip during the migration. When you set up your migration inside of the Google Admin Console, one of the options you'll see is folders to exempt or skip and there are tons of them now individual users don't necessarily even see a lot of these folders they're more system folders but the migration tool will grab them and pull them over if you don't exempt them i don't know if your list will look exactly like mine I'll include these folders in the description to this video so you can copy and paste, but that's one of the benefits of running those test migrations initially is you can figure out what folders uh, you want to skip. Number four is uh, one that took a little time to figure out. Now, I'm a Google Workspace expert. I am not a Microsoft admin expert at all, and it took us a little bit of time to configure the Microsoft administrator account that we used to perform the migration. So you need to be a Google super admin and you need a Microsoft account with similar admin credentials. The first few times we did this, I kept getting error messages because we didn't have the right permissions. I think we figured it out um, and nailed it down to this application administrator that you uh, you see right here. That's the, the key um, admin role you need in order to connect Google Workspace and Microsoft domains together and begin uh, the migration. One interesting thing that we learned, it was a nice surprise, the application administrator is able to run the migration without 
changing the password of the individual users. The application admin role is very powerful and gives essentially backend access to all user inboxes. This was nice for us because users could continue to use their accounts and not have to worry about change passwords. Um, we could go in, do the migration uh, with minimal disruption. Tip number five is another one that took forever to figure out. Uh, when we were running our test migrations, it was incredibly slow and kept getting error messages, server timeout, um, uh, server you know at limit, things like that. We finally, after searching and searching and searching, I found a random Reddit thread that pointed me in the right direction. In order to effectively migrate your data from Office 365 to Google, you need to lift your EWS um, that's the Exchange Web Service throttling policy. The default policy limits the amount of data that can be pushed across that connection, and it's pretty low, uh, and it just would not work with migration. Now, changing the policy is actually pretty easy once you figure out where to do it, and it's super weird. You have to log into the Microsoft admin portal. You click on the, the assistant icons when like a bottom right corner there's like chat with help and uh, you know it's one of those automated bot things you're like oh this is never going to work in that bot thing search for ews throttling and you're you'll find this diagnostic tool where it'll run a test it'll say you have a, a throttling policy in place and then all you have to do is there'll be a button down here that says lift policy temporarily and you can do it for you know two weeks 30 days whatever um and this allowed our migration to proceed substantially faster. Uh, it was really amazing. This is not well documented. Google did not include this anywhere in its documentation. Um, like I said, I had to find a random Reddit thread uh, to point me in the right direction. Hopefully you found this video and it'll uh, help you out as well. Now, number six is something that does not make sense. Uh, it does have to do with the throttling policy. Um, I, I kept getting error messages during my testing that said, you know, server at capacity and whatnot. And so we had 150 users to migrate. So I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to break these down into small groups so I don't overwhelm the server. No, actually the opposite is true. The throttling policy is based on concurrent migrations. The more users you migrate, the, um, larger your data cap becomes. This is the actual uh, message on that policy, and it's 150 megabytes per mailbox. So if you do 100 mailboxes, it's 100x that limit. So it doesn't make sense, and we learned over time that it's better to migrate more users concurrently than to break them into smaller groups. Now, number seven is related to this as well. Once you begin a migration, it's hard to stop it. Now, our initial goal was to migrate different um, timeframes of data for different users. So like administrators were going to get 10 years of data and teachers were going to get three years of data. The problem is that the administrators are very, very heavy users. They have lots of data and the, the data transfer took forever. I mean, I had one user who took three days um, to transfer. I mean, it was like 40 gigs of, of space in that one mailbox. The problem with having multiple policies and starting and stopping is you can't stop a migration until it's finished. So I was just sitting there waiting for one user to finish migrating when I had you know dozens and dozens of others that could have been running concurrently. So what we learned is while you might only want to do, you know, certain amount of data for different groups, if you can avoid it, just do one big migration for everybody. That way it'll go faster um, and you won't be waiting, starting and stopping, wasting a lot of time. This screen here is one that I uh, spent a lot of time staring at, you know, looking at the, um, the progress, waiting for these bars to, you know, tick up to the end. You just have to be patient. It'll get there eventually, never as fast as you want, uh, but it will, it will get to the end at some point. Tip number eight is a tough one. 100% is finished. You have to be patient. So again, back to this screen here. Um, there were so many times when a, an account would get all the way to the very end and would be stuck at 99%. You got to let it finish. So what we learned is 
that the actual emails are migrated from zero to 99%. And the reason they get stuck at 99% is that um, that is when the labels are applied. And you got to let that finish. We stopped it one time. I was thinking, oh, it just got stuck at 99%. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to stop it. The emails were there, but none of them were organized. They weren't organized into their folders. So you've just got to let it finish. Be patient. It took days uh, for some accounts. The, the more folders a user has, um, the longer that last 1% is going to take. So we learned that uh, by experience. Now, tip number nine is uh, something that hopefully will be very um, relieving to you. If something happens, data doesn't migrate, you don't wait to 100%, you cancel it early. Um, if you mess something up, it's okay to re-migrate. Um, the migration tool is very, very forgiving. Remigrating will not duplicate emails, events, or contacts. So at, if you remigrate an account, it will actually check the source and the destination account and say, oh, that email's already in there. I'm going to skip that one. This is very uh, helpful. We did have, for whatever reason, several accounts where the emails migrated, but they were not labeled correctly. Actually, the, the superintendent, uh, her account had this issue. The good news is we just remigrated it, let it get to 100%. She was able to still continue working in her account and, you know, doing her daily uh, tasks. And eventually when the remigration finished, it put all of the label, um, the emails into the correct label. So it's okay to remigrate if something happens uh, and you need to. My final tip number 10 is just another reminder. You just have to be patient. Um, you know, migrating 150 accounts, uh, about 500 gigabytes of data. I mean, it took a solid two weeks. Um, I mean, a lot of times you're just clicking the button, starting the migration, and then you're just sitting and waiting for it. So it might be two, three days of waiting for accounts to migrate. Um, you will see the little progress bar slowly tick um, up, but uh, just be patient. It'll happen and uh, your data will be there and you'll be able to utilize your new Google Workspace domain. Hopefully these 10 tips are uh, useful for you. I've got another video that will actually walk you through the setup and some um, ways that you can improve your migration. Check that video out and all the other videos here on the Google Admin Bootcamp.